Basement Chen, after all we've been through. You know, I would love to not do this, but you don't have a skip button. So I've been playing the Tri-Stringer in Splatoon 3. See, that's me. I decided to use the bow because... My aching blood! So I think it might be in my best medical interest to maybe try out some slower paced weapons. Besides, I played multi-shot Bombo in Zelda. I played multi-shot Bombo in Monster Hunter. How hard could the multi-shot Bombo in Splatoon be? Very hard is the answer. But here's what I've learned after over 100 matches. Well, I don't know how many it's actually been, but the app says I have over 70 wins, and I have definitely lost more than I have won. Also, this is from playing in these extremely sweaty X rank turf war lobbies, because ranked right now is. Time to play some B rank Rainmaker. Oh, look, it's the members of the world championship teams. A similar thing happened when Splatoon 2 launched, but to a lesser extent. Just wait a week or two, and I'm sure it'll even out. And it's worth mentioning mentioning that A, I'm not an expert on this weapon. Game came out a couple days ago. And B, if you're watching this in the future, this is the launch version of the game. The weapon has probably been buffed since then. Game came out a couple days ago. What is the Hold it! What are you searching right now? Don't worry about it, I'm using incognito mode. That's not a real thing, that's not gonna help you. Unlike today's sponsor, Atlas VPN. With more than 6 million users worldwide, Atlas VPN was created to make the internet accessible and secure for everyone. A VPN, short for virtual private network, protects its users' data from being stolen by outside entities. That's good to know. With a VPN, you can change your online location to get great deals. Say you want to do some traveling, you're going to buy hotel or plane tickets, they charge you extra based on your location. Too expensive, what a ripoff. Change your location, oh look, price drop on the plane tickets. That'll come in handy. What are you planning? Nothing. Right now, Atlas VPN is running a huge discount. Using the link in the description, you can get a three year subscription for just $1.99 a month with a 30 day money back guarantee. That's just a good deal. Time's running out, so get your deal today by clicking the link in the video description below. I got it. Back to the video. What is the Tri Stringer? The bow is one of the most technical main weapons in all of Splatoon. It's like 60% charger, 30% explosher, 10% suction bomb, and 100% the bow fires three arrows. Splatoon 3. It has two levels of charge. Well, really three levels. Uncharged, level 1 charge, and level 2 charge. And within each of those, you can fire in a horizontal pattern by being on the ground when you shoot, or in a vertical pattern by jumping before shooting. So really, it has six different firing modes. I'm very tired. And level 1 and level 2 charges fire little explosives that can do extra damage. They're like mini suction bombs. I don't know what real world moist objects those are supposed to be. Popsicles maybe? I'm going to call them bottles in this video. The longer you charge the bow, the arrows have more range, the less spread. I don't know why all these games keep making the bow and arrow super complicated. It's a string and a curved stick that launches a straight stick. But alright, it's worth mentioning that unlike real life, arcing your shots does not get you any extra range. Shooting parallel to the ground gives you max range. Also, similar to an explosher glob, you have to time your arrows flying through the air to hit your target, which can be tricky. Show me some numbers! This is my science jacket. Okay, here's a graph of how much damage each shot can do depending on how many arrows and bottles hit your target that you can pause and read. One thing to mention is that with the 98 damage one, players can easily take the other two damage needed just by walking through enemy ink, such as the ink that your bow paint leaves behind. Uncharged shots should only be used in two situations. One, for painting. It may seem like it's not good at painting, but if you look up, walk forward, and fire at like one third the max fire rate, you can paint a pretty good area around you. The biggest problem with this is that you can't see anything when you do this, such as, you know, the other players. But you can pull up the map while doing this. Only use this technique in a safe area, like the beginning of a turf war match. Could maybe be useful in splat zones too when no one's around. And two, if you're in close proximity of someone who's already taken 
damage. This is a last resort. The bow is not a close range weapon, it is a two range weapon. But remain calm and aim your middle shot like you're playing a close range shooter and you might just survive. Charge level 1 shots are good for area control. Time it well and you can fire off a bunch in a row. Bottles all over the place, leave the battlefield looking like my apartment on a Sunday morning. They don't do a lot of damage, but the sight of them will prevent the other team from walking over there. Charge level 2 shots or your money maker, the breadwinner, the baconator. Use horizontal shots to send them a message and use vertical shots to send them to hell. Man, how do you consistently hit the one hit KOs? I don't know. Look, it's easy to hit the one shot every time in the training area on a stationary target, but how often do you fight stationary targets that won't try to dodge in actual matches? Answer in your notebooks now. Never! It's easier to get a one shot kill with a vertical jump shot than a horizontal ground shot and I'm sure there will be players who will eventually be able to land it every single time or almost every time but all three arrows have to hit the target in a very precise way and it's difficult to consistently do against actual people. Meanwhile, a charger you point and shoot and get it every time so why not just use a charger? I don't know, why use a brush when a roller can get a kill in one swing? Why use a bucket when a shooter can kill faster? The answer is because different weapons have different properties and nuances that make them unique. While stringers and chargers certainly have similarities, if you play this weapon exactly how you would play a charger, you're going to be playing a worse charger. First off, advantages the tri-stringer has over the chargers. More mobility, very useful even at partial charge, can arc it to do damage over walls and obstacles. Better at controlling areas, you can even control areas that aren't normally paintable using the bottles. There's no laser telling the other team exactly where you're aiming. And most importantly for people like me, if you miss, you can still do damage. What do I do if I don't land the one shot? Didn't you read the script? Wait! I get another shot! Yeah, just shoot at them again. It can be tempting to follow up a level 2 shot with a quick level 1 shot, but unless they're really close, don't do that. Remain calm and use another level 2 shot instead. get your brain in the game. You see all these targets that aren't moving in the training area? No, you don't. You only practice on the moving ones from now on. In battles, you may need to change your mindset. This is not a sweaty, killy weapon. This is more of a methodical weapon. Don't think of it as a charger that looks like a bow. Think of it as a support weapon that can sometimes get one-shot kills. However, similar to charger, positioning is extremely important. Find yourself a couple power spots and be the eyes in the sky. See someone approaching your side of the map? Launch some bottles in their path. They don't do a lot of damage, but they don't know that unless they watch this video. Crap. Uh, I mean, they actually one shot you uh, avoid the bottles. You see a teammate in a skirmish? Shoot some arrows over there. Sometimes it's hard to fight someone one on one, and it's a thousand percent harder when you also have to dodge arrows and bottles. But that's not all. You can be mobile amongst your power spots, and even be a midline bow user. Be a bow on the move. Running all over the map like Carmen Sandy. Diego. Do people younger than me know who that is? Just don't overextend and make sure you have a buddy with you. Solo bow is a no-go. Archers love potatoes. You know why? Because playing this weapon, you're gonna be Emperor Chip. Hit opponents with chip damage to make it easier for shorter range friends to finish them off. Yeah, I know. Be a good teammate in the team-based game. May not be the ordained revelation you were hoping for, but I think all of us have played with people who needed to be reminded of that. And while chip damage is useful, it's easy to pitfall into overly relying on your bottles. You should still be aiming for your target every time. The bottle explosions don't have as much range as you think they would. Just think of them as fun little extras in case you miss and plan where you're going to shoot while you're charging up. Oh, and then don't forget about your summon special. <laughs> Toxic Mist is really useful. If Toxic Mist actually did, it's 
fucking job! The intent is to hit them with the mist to slow them down, finish them off with a bow one shot. The problem is I've seen so many players just casually swim through the mist at full speed, completely unbothered by it, like they're a non-British teeth having person when the queen queen it. It's so inconsistent, especially with all this tactic cooler spam. Get rid of this garbage and bring back Disruptor. That being said, the bow is all about controlling space. Toxic Mist may not actually do that much, but the other team doesn't know that, unless they watch this video. Crap. Uh, I mean, Toxic Mist is actually really harmful, you guys. The sight of Toxic Mist is more effective than the actual mist, so pair it with your bow bottles and you'll create a no man's land on the battlefield. Killer Whale 5.1 is currently, uh, not one of the best specials in the game, but we said the same thing about Stingray when Splatoon 2 came out. This thing is like horizontal tenor missiles. Cool when it works, but don't rely too much on it. Set it and forget it. Like your main weapon and sub weapon, allegedly, it's good at getting assists. The one thing New Whale does consistently well is countering Crab Tank. That's about it. But again, the bow is about controlling space. You throw a Toxic Mist, activate Whale, well, throw another Mist, use your bow a bunch, and maybe get a kill. Is it worth doing all of that to maybe get a kill or two? Answer in your notebooks now. Conclusion for now. Is a weapon that excels at controlling space over getting kills useful? Well, considering there's a special every team uses that almost entirely invalidates deaths, yeah, I'd say it's worth considering. But it's kind of like multiclassing into four different jobs in D&D. Maybe it's better to do one or two things really well instead of trying to do six things just okay. Especially when you have teammates that can cover the other bases. This thing will probably get buffed, given that it can be improved in every aspect. But the two biggest ones would be faster midair charge speed and slightly bigger bottle explosion hitbox. What abilities should you use? For now, I'll say these ones are pretty good. I don't have good gear yet though, so TBD. You know, th the tri stringer is like a puppy. It's fun for sure, and it's exciting when it does what you want it to do, but it can be so frustrating sometimes. However, spend enough time with it, it'll become a reliable companion. Or maybe it'll poop on your bed. Because right now, this weapon is a glorified jet sculpture that you have to charge up. And I'm pretty sure the other bow is better. But it's fun to use, so I'm gonna keep using this one and see how good I can get. And after it gets buffed, I'll be unstoppable. Anyways, thanks for watching, and remember to subscribe. Comment below with any tri stringer tips you have if you've been playing it. And today's comment code word is tactics. Comment tactics if you made it all the way through the video. And uh, that's it, video's over.